Diablo 4 is about to get its brand new patch, where we have a ton of changes including the uber uniques, which will for the most part change your method of farming. We'll also go over some bugs and issues for some hardcore players and some remedies there, as well as a whole bunch more. What's up world, should be back in there to check out all things Diablo 4. Okay, so the patch notes for the 1.3.2 update just dropped. Now I do want to clarify this as we will not be seeing this actual patch come out until February 13th. However, there is some massive warnings with that and a ton of things that you should be saving. So we'll go over that now, including what's happening with the Uber Uniques. To add, there are a broad range of tool sets that you can utilize for Diablo. However, there is no other tool like today's video sponsor. Mobile Linux is an insanely intuitive and innovative app that lets you deep dive into an incredible amount of useful tools for all your build creation needs. And this free application, and yes you heard me right, it is completely free. This app has helped me so much with my build creations and comparing and contrasting different statistics. I was able to find incredibly interesting and different unique builds compared to mine, and even got to try out Crypt's Ultimate Fire Sword. I love being able to glance over at my stat priorities and build priorities just right within the game. And the new highly anticipated build planner is available now to use directly in app. And this allows me to completely redefine my build and plan out new strategies without having to use any of my precious gold. Again, you can download for free using my link down below. Thank you again to Mobilytics for sponsoring this video. We'll start off here with the Uber Unique Crafting. And yes, you heard that right, we are getting Uber Unique Crafting now, which leads on here where they have a developer note saying that Uber Unique items are highly sought after. With Season of Blood, we introduced target farming Uber Uniques with Durial to give players another source of acquiring this type of item. However, we want to give players increased autonomy in obtaining their desired un Uber Unique by addressing feedback that expressed how acquiring duplicate or undesired uber unique items lessens that feeling of triumph. A new system empowers players to make use of duplicate and desired uber uniques by salvaging them for new resources, which can then be used to eventually craft an uber unique of their choosing. Additionally, the chance for uber unique items to drop everywhere but in uber durial encounters have been increased. So that's some massive news there with the uber uniques and even getting them outside of uber durial, which I know if you guys have been farming uber durial like I have, I have about maybe 200 runs of him so far. This is through various carry runs and groups, and yeah, even with last season, I feel like I got a lot more uber uniques, or at least the ones that I was looking for. And last season, I even got Shaco, and I got a Ring of Starless Skies, which I have yet to see at this point now, except we did have one person in one of my runs get an actual uber unique like that. The only other one that I've seen is Endarials right now, which I sometimes use in dungeons, depending on how much lifesteal that I need. However, for the most part, in my anecdotal there, it does seem like this season was severely nerfed on the drop rates, or at least that they were a lot harder to get some of the uber uniques that were really sought after. So I really do think this is going to help overall. However, going back into the uber unique items, which they can now be salvaged to provide a new resource, which will be this resplendent sparks. Players can bring five of those sparks to the alchemist and transmute them to an uber unique of their choice. The refine resource tab at the alchemist has been renamed to transmute, and the option to craft an uber unique item can now be found under that tab. Now again, I want to re-preface this, this update does not come out till February 13th, so do not go and salvage any of your uber uniques currently. If you have any saved over, or if you have any duplicates, do save them until this update comes out, as it's probably going to be a little bit hard for people to get five uber uniques. In fact, I don't even think I've seen five in my 200 runs or so. However, again, they did increase the drop chance of uber uniques outside of the uber durial encounters, so hopefully we will see more in the open world. Now we do have some other fixes here with that, which the miscellaneous here, we have the curse shrine of Event now gives a shrine bonus at the start of the event instead of when it's finished. So those are really help for those events and kind of getting those events down faster and quickly, although they do take time to ramp up depending on how the event is. Although I do kind of like that change overall, at least it gives you that benefit now if you do choose so, so that way you can use it on the event itself. Now for bug fixes, we do have a bunch of bug fixes here for accessibility. This is all mostly pertaining to the screen reader, so if you've been using that, that should have some fixes there now. Now Season of Construct also did get some fixes fixes related to it, which most of this stuff is just tooltip related items with the igneous cores. Basically that that information didn't point to being able to summon Malthus. The journal page also did get a fix here for the Kali's heart quest, and they also fixed an issue where the first person in the party would get credit for looting Obelisk Whispers, and then the other party members of course wouldn't receive that reward. Now Lunar Awakening also did get some fixes there, where the final quest for Lunar Awakening could not start if the player already had a max of Ancestral Favors. They had a shrine fix here as well as an Ancestral Favor window not automatically closing when walking away from Ying Yu. We had a treasure goblin fix under gameplay here where they fixed that they could not spawn while fighting Avarice. They also fixed another major issue here where enemies downed via execute effect could not drop loot. That's kind of a big one there and probably will be upsetting for some people. 
They also fixed a pretty big issue with the Melted Heart, which was not always rolling the maximum value for its movement speed. Another major one here is the aspect of Echoing Fury didn't grant a bonus if you already learned Tactical Rallying Cry. Advanced Rapid Fire was also incorrectly overriding the bonus critical strike damage from other sources. And the Ring of Starless Skies seems like it's getting a bit of a nerf here, which I would think so at least because the resource reduction and damage increase was not calculating correctly. And that's like one of the major reasons why a lot of people's builds are doing like double the amount of damage that they were after they put the ring on is that essentially this ring was doing so much damage. So I'm wondering there if it was a bit of a fix and I'm assuming so that it was a bit of a nerf. As well as the visual and performance and stability improvements as they always add at the very end. They also fixed another major issue here. If you were using an NVMe, you might have experienced instability. And yeah, I even had the game on an NVMe, so hopefully that is fixed if there was any. Although I didn't really notice any this season, it seemed like it was running okay, so didn't have any problems there. A legendary or unique item could disappear if the item was dropped. So if you spent a lot on getting your gems going and kind of messed up there, and then you dropped it, you might have actually lost that, so that should be fixed now. And again, we do have a late minute mentionable here for the hardcore players, as there is something going on with the Pale Tongues. So seemingly there is a shortage of Pale Tongues, which is used for a lot of potions in hardcore. However, there was a commenter here to alleviate that. There is a dungeon on the left of the map, which is Alder's Cave, which does actually drop around 25 tongues per run. So if you are short on that, it's a good spot to farm and easy one there. And I'll include a little infographic kind of where that location is. All in all, that should about cover for today's video. If you like, like, and subscribe. Until next, deuce.